ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, geeks, nerds, fanboys and girls, and especially gamers of all ages, you have reached the Vigilant Geek Podcast. I'm Andrew Puzak of Vigilant Geek Media, and with me, as always, my comic book partner in crime. Yep, hold an arm. And he's of Vigilant Geek Media as well. Uh, and also, uh, we have Vin Scorpion. Yeah, what's up? Who's also a Vigilant Geek Media. That I am. Lots of Vigilant Geek Media guys today. BGM um, into his house. Yeah, we're all repping today. We're repping hard. So we got a great episode for you guys today on uh, current uh, video games and gaming and things of that sort. So, uh... You know, I'd like to just say, if, you know, kick this off that uh, I uh, saw a really cool YouTube video last night of uh, uh, this virtual reality PlayStation 4, uh, and, and it was Batman, and you could basically be Batman, and, like, it shows the cave and shows, like, you know, you have to put on the suit, you know, using, like, the, the, the gloves or whatever. It was so cool. And they didn't show you much, but they showed you the cave, you know, and, and, and it just looks like the coolest thing, like something that could probably consume my life. <laughs> it was so cool. Like, who doesn't want to be Batman, you know? I, I know what I'm looking for. It does look cool, that little teaser they gave you, what you can, what games you can actually use uh, with that uh, virtual reality game system. Yeah, well, I so mean, it's, it's... Grappling hooks and all that kind of stuff. That's cool as hell. Yeah, I mean... Oh, yeah, it showed the grappling hook, yeah. All the stuff that, that they're gonna, people are going to be able to do with this technology is going to be pretty interesting. Oh, it's so cool. Like, I don't know. I've been really into sci-fis lately, and I just love... I used to fear technology. I used to fear it like crazy, but now it's like things like this, like gad gadgetry is starting to allure me a little bit more. Um, which is, you know, it might be manipulating my mind, but hey, it's really looks really fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it looks good. Um, it's already out on the market. Wow. So wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, now right now, it was spe for video games is a really like big time of year because this is usually when you're really big. Uh, for well, your real big releases, your your mm. big publishers, they put out their big heavy hitting games. Yeah, the triple A games are coming out. Yeah, and it's like the the franchises, like the well, Madden's already came out. We have the WB two K series, two K NBA, Madden, FIFA. Yeah. They're all coming out several months before Christmas. Mm -hmm. So that oh when yeah, the Christmas oh yeah, season arrives. Yeah. People are already all these games gifts. will be on, yeah. and then people rationalize making purchases like that anyway. So. Mm. Now, imagine this for one second, especially you, Vin. Imagine doing the virtual reality PlayStation with a wrestling game where you have to, like, fight, you know, Stone Cold Steve Austin or The Rock or, or The Undertaker or whoever, and you, like, you're, you're, like, a created character, but you're yourself. Like, that would be really cool, you know? Hell yeah. Uh, just, like, do you have to do the grapple-ups? You know, like, uh, and have like the epic thing you have to walk down the ring and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, I kind of, yeah. I kind of do that with the two K W two K seventeen game anyway. Yeah, just really. Stick Vinny back into the Matrix. Yeah, <laughs> stick <laughs> in the Matrix of where I exist Put me everywhere. Back in. I exist everywhere in the PlayStation Network. <laughs> what, what would you like to be? I want to be a pro wrestler, dude. <laughs> Today. <laughs> Oh, dude, that virtual reality is going to consume people's lives. It is evil, but it's it looks so cool. Okay, well, yeah, that's just the simple games. Like, imagine what they do when they have the whole first-person MMOs. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. We're going to run around and stuff? Then they're going to probably have to make laws for cyber sex and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's it going to be, like, Demolition Man? Dude, dude. <laughs> you got, like, third-party developers with attachments and stuff. Rated them for mature. Like, you know the Japanese are going to head the... They're going to lead the way. Yeah. They're going to lead the, <laughs> the way. The anti-virtual <laughs> yeah, reality yeah. games. Yo, stick this freaking, you know, t tentacle 
somewhere, you know. I don't, I don't <laughs> what? <laughs> tentacle, the game. <laughs> and you're like, whoa, and, uh, I'm a tentacle monster. <laughs> and coming next week. You're hey, pretty able- lady, I'm a tentacle monster. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and coming next week, you can, do, you, can download the, you can download the DLC where it turns into squid monsters. Yeah. <laughs> and then if you get even more, then you unlock this, then you can pay for the DLC where the tentacles look like phalluses. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh boy, uh, this uh, discussion uh, wouldn't happen to be influenced by hentai or anything, would it? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe. Well, yeah. I mean, look, VR. We got a VR we, hentai. Are, are people people having that? People are ha- need to be having these kind of discussions. Or yeah, no, I I think that there should be some kind of yeah. like cyber like anti cyber raping police or something or some law or, or I don't know. It, it's it's a really you know cyberspace is a really gray area. It it really is. And and the thing about the internet is it's really run by the people. Uh, the government is trying to get a hold of the internet and police it as much as possible, but. They don't own the internet. The people do. Yeah, the internet's so, like the velt. It's but this because of that, wild, you, savage land. Yeah, that yeah. really isn't censored whatsoever. Exactly. Um, it's actually kind of cool to think about. But uh, yeah, there's there's all you know, different you know any, anything you could think of in regards to content, you'll find it. And uh, because of that, there are certain things that might you know like might be questionable in regards to, to ethics and morality. That's all. Yeah. We'll leave it at that. Well, they, need to, <laughs> they, need, they, they just need to figure out what's, what's socially acceptable so that people don't get unnecessarily kink-shamed, you know? Right, right. Because that's always just really awkward. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it actually really is. Uh, <laughs> I won't go there either. <laughs> I would like for them to bring back, like, Duck Hunt. And with that virtual reality game, dude, that's really what this kind of feels like. Like it yeah. could be that kind of peripheral, like the gun used to be. That like it only really worked for certain games, mm-hmm. right? But I, I feel like the VR's got just way more possibility than just pretending to throw batarangs at bats in your cave. And then you actually, oh yeah, you can actually shoot that dog that actually laughs at you when you miss a duck. Yeah, well, you gotta <laughs> you gotta pay an extra twenty bucks for that DLC, Vinny. I'll buy the skin. I don't care. <laughs> I always get the season pass for everything anyway. <laughs> and I don't play the game at all. <laughs> so um let's get into some of uh our our favorite games here that uh have come out over the past year, some of the newer releases. Uh there's been a lot of great games that have come out uh over the past year. I personally I'm not one of the uh video game analysts here really. I, I just I don't play enough video games, unfortunately. But you guys are experts, uh, and uh, I'd love to hear about some of the games you guys have been playing lately. Well, for the for the year, um, we had a couple big releases. Um, the Fallout. What is that's it? right. Fallout, Fallout 4, Four came out, yeah. and that's it. That was a huge deal. H one Z one, and that took place in Boston. Correct. Uh, yes, and in, yeah. in this particular uh, telling of the story. It, yeah, that's yeah. uh, that's pretty neat. In this uh, post-apocalyptic boss, and, and then Battleborn came out, and it was made by the same people who did um, Borderlands, and Borderlands Ooh. was amazing. Yeah, and but it turned to Battleborn was kind of it was uh, Overwatch it, took that over. Yeah, over. Overwatch is pretty much the same thing, but Blizzard is just a I don't know they're they're like a more high-powered studio. Really, mm-hmm. everything they touch gets nuts. It's pretty much the same thing, right? You there are different yeah, characters. It's basically based on the each, characters, but it's each like character be, has their own abilities, right? Like yeah, three I, unique abilities, and then because that's how battle. Yeah, is. and then you have the one power specialty, and the, you can use. Just Overwatch is a lot more fun and more, more smoother than Overwatch was. Oh, you mean Battleborn? <clears throat> Battleborn, yeah. Yeah. And then it's like uh, I'm thinking about it. I see, haven't played it yet, but I've I've been I've been watching people that have played it, and it looks a lot more fun. It was just, I'm just surprised that, you know, Battleborn didn't take off. It's pretty much the same kind of, like, idea. Well, yeah. I, mean, I guess we're playing, like, the GoBots version of it, you know? Well, it's still a great game. Yeah. But, uh, the, I mean, great graphics, made by great people, great sense of humor. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just, it was, it's a complete multiplayer game, and it it's kind of like, 
Like, if you ever played Dota, it's like that, only in a first-person shooter. All right. Or League of Legends, that's another good example of, like, you know, these just uh, hero arena games. And only this was kind of, they took their own take on it in its first person. I mean, it was good. I couldn't, I don't know, those type of games, like, if you want to be good at them, you got to play them all the time. Yeah, and it's, it's like just, repetition. Like, lately, games have just been asking for, like, huge commitments, especially mm. games with long story modes. Oh, yeah. So, so like, a lot, majority of my time spent, like, playing, like, real quick games, like uh, FIFA. Mm. I can just go play a game of that online. Oh, know? Holden loves his FIFA. I yeah. do. I'm like I'm obsessed. Well, well you're you're a soccer fan, so you follow the teams. I do. Well, yeah, oh. it was funny because I I first got into it by buying the game, and then I learned about all the players, and then eventually I ended up getting better at the game. Cool. Because I watched mm. YouTube videos. Sports games are always fun. I used to love like even though it, it's kind of funny because. Uh, I'm not like a, f- a big basketball fan, but I used to love basketball video games for some reason and make making my own teams with like my friends on them and whatnot. Oh, basketball yeah. teams are basketball games are fun, you know. It's like, like football games are fun too. <laughs> the yeah. golden age of create a player. Like, yeah, like these days, like it's more intricate than it's ever been before. But like it's just exhausting. Cause, like, oh they, yeah, they just automatically expect that that's the game mode you want to get into. Yeah, exactly. Um, like, nah, I just want to play a quick. Throwaway game. Play a quick game. I yeah, I don't want to like spend three hours creating a, a character's <laughs> face. You know, <laughs> like I, I want to play the game. Yeah. yeah, and like people get so into create a player or create a wrestler or what have you um, that oftentimes they spend hours on that, and then they like, oh, screw this, I'm not even going to play the game right now. Yeah, I'm you t- just spend all your time <laughs> creating stuff. Well, not necessarily because uh, I I play games, especially with um, the creative the creative player for mostly like the um. The WWE games, their creative, uh, creative player this year has been very advanced. Oh, really? Um, you, um, oh yeah, I figured it is. But the golden age but, is back yeah. when you were a kid, back when you'd be more into something like that. Mm-hmm. It's like now you can See? now you can do face captures if you have a PlayStation Eye and have the camera, and then you can actually put your face on the creative wrestle and just morph it into it. Yeah, I've seen some of those. More often than not, it becomes mm. this butchered atrocity that belongs, like, out of a freaking Halloween film. Well, like, or, you know, <laughs> plus, horror film. Plus now you could Halloween, pl- specifically. Plus now you could do your creative, play- creative player, creative wrestler, and um, just put into a storyline where he makes it through NXT and goes to the main roster, you know, wins so many matches, you know. They didn't put out a game last year for WWE, did they? Yeah, they do every year. They do every year? It's it's, it's like every, it's, it's an annual game that comes out just like Madden. Yeah, no, I thought that for a second, and then for some reason I thought that it didn't. Well, they have, it was 2K16, and Stone Cold Steve Austin was on the cover, and it, they did, like, the showcase of his career. Yeah. And then, uh... Yeah, the, what, what else came out for games this year, though? Because that one came um, out pretty recently. It really mm-hmm. seems like they they're releasing a lot of their stuff on the heavily on the latter half of the year. Well, we had Rain- you had Rainbow Six: The Siege. Yeah. Um, the Division, which was a very popular game for a while. Yes, actually, I remember the there was a lot of hype about that. I was playing it for a shortest time, but you get into a level where you're a bunch of high high level people you haven't played. And you're like level ten. You're getting killed like one shot one kill it's you know? pretty much what an rpg that plays like yeah it's like, like uh post-apocalyptic. uncharted 4 another game yes. that came out this year Ooh, it's a great well it's i don't know i haven't got into it as much as i should it's a good multiplayer ah. the multiplayer i've played it's just not for me I think the but the storyline's good ass. enough. The storyline is just good enough. Well, the storyline is the best part of the game. Yeah. If you're just talking about the story mode alone, like the Uncharted series is probably one of the greatest video game series ever made. Wow. Yeah, I went there. <laughs> wow. Yeah. High praise. Oh, it sounds like it's really something, and I'm surprised I haven't seen any of that gameplay yet from you or... Christopher Gerard or, or any of my gaming friends. Well, it's a PlayStation exclusive, mm-hmm. and then I'm I'm much too absorbed in uh, I don't know. Jeez, whenever you're, you're you're coming home from work or going to work, I'm always like in Netflix watching Netflix or something. Yeah, man, and I'm always working. <laughs> it's lo- so lame, so lame. The the freaking legend of the day, man, and the night man. The night man, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, a um, little inside there, but uh, I might as well uh, break the fourth wall and let you all know that uh, um, Holden and I are, are roommates, and uh, 
I often have to work the night shift, and Holden gets up pretty early in the morning and seizes the day. So he's like day man, and I'm like night man, you know? Day man, whoa, fighter of the night man, whoa, champion of the sun, whoa, he's a master of karate and friendship. <laughs> For everyone, day man, day man, whoa. Oh. And he likes frappuccinos. <laughs> frappuccinos. <laughs> oh, Vinny, you just, you didn't get the reference. I did. Well, so you're Bruce Wayne, he's Batman? I don't even know, dude. No, day man, day man and night man. It's, uh, it's from an always, always sunny, sunny in yeah. Philadelphia. They did like a musical called Day Man. And Mac played night man. And, uh... I mean, that's really like what it, that's it. I mean, yeah, yeah, but yep, that's the reference. That is the reference. Fourth wall broken. Thank you. Smashed. Um, um. so uh, what else you guys got for me? I want to oh, know. Well, I want to know what games to pick out when I go to the gaming store. The, the games that the new releases, particularly the. Let's see. Well, the you got you got Infinite Warfare. That's but, uh, Infinite Warfare. Oh, that's coming out what November fifth. <laughs> November fifth, right? it releases. Yeah, it launches on November fifth. Um, you pay an extra. You can buy Infinite Warfare by itself, but you can also buy a special deal where you get the Modern Warfare Remastered. And you can, if you ha if you pre pre ordered it before, you can actually play the um, campaign remastered version. But the multiplayer will be available once it's launched. Can you make a player in that game? No, you're just because I'd a, make I'd make Dick Cheney. <laughs> And I'd have him create infinite warfare. <laughs> <laughs> have people wear like uh, deer hunting vests. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, hey, that's a deer, right? No, I don't know why. I just Dick Cheney <laughs> popped into my head. Man, was, most hey, dangerous game. <laughs> you can you can probably do a DLC. I'm like, hey, Activision, you know, get uh, Call of Duty, you know, you know, infamous political figures. You know, <laughs> Dick Cheney <laughs> and uh, George W. George W. <laughs> 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 Man just said, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna play some uh, Search and Destroy over here. What so it? tell me a little bit more about Infinite Warfare. <laughs> yeah, what? This is just another super futury storyline. Yeah, this it's one? like, um, who'd they get uh, to do the voiceovers for this one? Because they always get famous people now. I didn't really look. I didn't really look into that. Even though you did. No, I I don't know who plays the voice. Characters. How do you not? You're all up in the. You love uh, these games. You oh, I do, who. but it's like the only ones I remember, like from heart, is like when Kiefer Sutherland and uh, Gary Oldman did World at War. The I think he also did Metal Gear last year too. Mm. Usually they get somebody else to do Snake. Snake. Mm. Oh yeah, Snake. Yeah. Then you know, so I would have talked. Well, I don't know. That was a last year game. It was still it was was one of the better sandboxes. Than us. And then Grand Theft Auto V is a really great sandbox game. Oh, yeah, yeah let's get into that because, Vinny, you were raving about that uh, earlier before we started recording. Oh, it's a great sandbox game. You know, it's like one of the best online games at the. Well, what it, what does done. it mean? What is a sandbox game? So I, I, I'm not familiar with the term. What they do is they give you a character and what you, they did put you in a top down third person view. Okay. And then. They give you a world to explore, hence sandbox. Oh, okay. So they just okay. stick you in no. there, and then usually they give you uh, different types of missions you can do to earn currency in said game. Oh yeah, okay. Um, so it's like one of those like like big like uh, like free free range type games where like like with yeah, Grand Theft Auto. Right. <clears throat> free yeah. Roam. Okay. Free roaming. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. So cool. Um, so what's what's so great about the the latest Grand Theft Auto uh, compared to some of the others. They've had a ton of games over the years. Well, uh, the, the 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 price of the game, it's been out for like three years now, but the price of the game has remained the same at 60 bucks. But the, the amount of content, they don't charge you for any DLC, and they put out different map packs like every three months. Yeah, it's and then what? They just put out a map pack for for biker gang. You yeah, can, you, you can start your own biker gang. Yeah, you can start a motorcycle club. You can. Um, I uh, love that. Recruit, so you could recruit friends to be in your in your club. And um, and and that's what you did, Vinny. Right? You uh, created your own biker gang, and and you, yeah. you guys grow and sell marijuana. And Holden, <laughs> you're like second in command. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm yeah. the president of that. Big, He's a, big stuff going on. If I had a console, I would join the the biker gang. Well, that's a good thing about um, you know Rockstar. They they keep that they that's a major AAA game, and it comes out probably like what every five years, if yeah. I'm correct. So they try to make the Pretty best much. of it and try to make it branch out as much as you can. You're like, granted, yeah, you can get the stuff. It's a deal. It's a free DLC, but yeah, you do do have to do purchases. And if you wanted to, you can actually you purchase um, Grand Theft Auto dollars. Oh, you can. Yeah, you can. Um, you can get like money shock cards and. I feel and, like that's cheating, though. Yeah, or you can just do it. The but you're paying easy money way. for yeah. it. Whatever, you're no. paying actual money out of pocket to kick ass in a game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I've fallen into pitfalls like that before. I did it with FIFA for a little while. Really? Oh yeah, because oh, okay. I'm trying to get the best players in the world on my like on my mix mash team. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, it was grim, man. I don't know. It's embarrassing how much money I've spent <laughs> like trying to do that. I don't really do that anymore. I've... It's not embarrassing. It's fun <laughs> to be a kid. <laughs> And plus, it, plus it's good. Like, older, you've only been playing that for about like three or four weeks now. Which one? Great that Photo Five online. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing that great. Like, Vinny showed me where all the free cars are, and then I bought a garage and a and an apartment that I haven't looked inside yet. At least cool. they have. A, at least they have a good solo thing you can do. You know, you can actually earn money. It's not as a amount the, the amount you get when you have like a full lobby, but they give you a, a chance to like get money. You can like. Rob convenience stores or you know <laughs> hit people up at the ATM you know um well people are always on and then can you, you pros- also- can you prostitute yourself out uh, no. no that would be hilarious <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't know. I'm, I, a, I'm just think, in a goofy mood today. Yeah, Rock, Rockstar pulls some limits on those. <laughs> it's, it's funny, but it's like, but the one thing I don't like about that game, Holden, is that. The, the cops in that game, like you're a one star, they're shooting at you. Yeah, I remember back in Grand Theft Auto 3, I could get all the way up to five stars, go to the top of the tallest building, and then like just snipe. Yep. And, and then, like, and, and I'd be all set until I'd get bored enough to go walk down, and then I'd get run over by a tank or something. <laughs> in this, like, good luck. You freaking get up to two stars. You're going to get found by the cops and then have your legs blown off and then ran <laughs> over twice. <laughs> then you have three stars. You have, like, the helicopter unit looking for you. Yeah, I mean, part of what Grand Theft Auto is is it's a farce on what society is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really is. And so with all the police brutality on the news, <laughs> hell, even back then, because, I mean, it never went away. And yeah. then since they're kind of representing the Los Angeles area and the, the reputation that those cops have. Ever since so, Rodney King. Yeah, so then in this game, we yeah. go ahead and we're, we're, we're going off the rails a little bit. And maybe you get your, your wanted level up a little bit. Like, forget it. These cops is, are just way too brutal. Yeah. I mean, I mean and, they give you, and they give you, like, crew serve weapons in this that you can fight the cops with. And it's still a huge pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, the cops are, are generally a, a huge pain in the ass. And, you know, I just want to say, fuck the police coming straight from the underground. <laughs> <laughs> nice end of a reference, though. I like and, it. And that's all I have to say about that. Oh, man, he's down with NWA and Detroit Velvet Smooth. Oh, yeah, me and DVS, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's from Moncton, dude. We chill all the time. Are you down with OPP? What's OPP? <laughs> I figured we were doing like initials and stuff like the OPP from uh, the song by Naughty by Nature. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Naughty by Nature. That's some old school shit. You don't right there. OPP. Yeah, yeah, you know me. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that song. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good callback. Um, but what's good about Rockstar? They get to keep it fresh. They have other yeah, stuff. Yeah. You can I do like know. heist. Heist is heist is okay. But, but then doing so like rob a bank or something. Online stuff. I'm wondering if they're ever going to do another Max Payne or or try to come up with something new. Yeah. Well, that's because they did that Max LA Payne Noir really game, cool. and that was a big deal because they used the face reading software, and it was. Well, what what they should what they should be doing is that a lot of people like the storyline of GG Grand Theft Auto Five is good too. You know, but people want to. I would like to do a DLC like they did in Grand Theft Auto Four, where you have like the loss. You can be have another storyline DLC, like an extension of the story, because they already did the biggest heist of all time. So you have like other groups coming in or something like that, like or dis or add-ons to that storyline. I don't know. I mean, it's a great way to kill time. Yeah. But it's still not even the biggest uh, deal as far as sandbox games this year. I mean, Red Dead Redemption's coming year. back. Red Dead Redemption Two. Oh, yeah. that—that's a great game. Yeah. Well, that's the next I love thing. westerns. I love them. 
Mm-hmm. That's going to be a fun one. But like No Man's Sky came out this year. And it's yeah. probably one of the most overhyped games ever. I thought it looked really, really cool. I guess it's ba- it's based on an algorithm, right? That like generates all these different planets and galaxies. Like some ridiculous, there's no way you'd be able to see them all. Yeah, I find that fascinating. Yeah, and then, but you did, really, what you do is you spend a lot of that time like mining, mining plutonium and minerals to like fuel your craft and like uh, and like sitting walking or like flying your ship around. Th- that's real that's like realistic stuff, but like I can see why it would be like a little boring. Like well, it gets tedious after te- a while. Tedious and boring. Yeah. And then a bunch of people got really upset because they thought there was going to be all this extra stuff incorporated into the game. Like, "Oh, you got this huge world that's going to have all this stuff and intergalactic this and trade and yeah. all these they 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 just had huge expectations when the developers never ever said the game was ever going to have anything remotely like that. Hmm. Pretty much what it is is you fly around, you do stuff, you 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 mine minerals, you sell the minerals. <laughs> you save up enough money to buy a bigger ship to carry more minerals. Yeah. And then eventually, and it's like you build up stuff over time, and then it's just... It's just a, like tedious work. Like killing time. <laughs> there are a lot of games like that that have been really popular, like uh, Animal Farm. No, not Animal Farm. Harvest Moon. Why did they call it Animal Harvest Farm? Moon. I know Nathan Burke, <laughs> he raves about that game. Yes, I loved Harvest Moon 64. It was a yeah. favorite. And pretty, pretty much all you do is like you clean up your field, you plant some crops, you go forage in the wilderness, uh, you, you get add-ons to your house, you milk the cows, you, you get the eggs from the chickens, you feed them some seed. You know, it's just, it's real, real tedious. But you you, you could sp- go ahead and find out how much time you spend on that. Yeah. Like, all right, well, no, just one more time, one more day. I'll make up enough money to go ahead and buy the wood I need in order to make the baby <laughs> carriage or some shit. Like, fucking, it, 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 it slowly wow. sneaks in and it steals your life. Yeah, you know, that reminds me a little bit of uh, The Sims. And in, in, uh, back in the day, when I was, especially when I was a younger kid, teenager, I, I The Sims, like, sucked me in. Like, I played, and it was just... It was bullshit. It was like playing house on a video game. Uh, And, like, you know, I would uh, make the wife, like, some girl that I had a crush on or something in high school and uh, and, and the kids and all that. It it was ridiculous. It was like a game of nothing, really. (laughs) It's The Sims. It's like, now we got to eat. Now you got to take a poop. Like... Up, go to work. Gonna Whoa. fast forward through that. Up, you're home now. Now I'm yeah. gonna dress you up in this. Oh, I can't wait to add the pool in the backyard. It's gonna be <laughs> fantastic. It's like no, dude, that game wasted so many hours of my life. <laughs> the one, the one, every, every one game I invested game. a lot of time in was it was a PC game. It was Roller, Roller Coaster Tycoon. Oh yeah, that was another um, one that could suck I you see, in. I made a sandbox so you had unlimited funds. You can make as big as you want. You could pull these different. You know, roller coasters, they break down. You have to hire maintenance people to pu- pick up the puke. <laughs> <laughs> you have to, it was like, oh, you need to buy more restrooms. People need to go to the bathroom. And all that kind of, it was a fun game, though. You can, you can make, I've seen Yeah, you some, make, make like a, a, an amusement park. Yeah, I love amusement parks. Amusement parks are great. Yeah. You have a souvenir stands. You can, um, I just invested a lot of time into that game when I was like bored. Yeah. Well, that's what these games are for, though. You don't freaking play them because you have shit to do. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> but some of the games, though, you you can start raging on these games, and I'm talking about like 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 Call of Duty games, and like like first person shooters. You can start cussing and words come out of your mouth like it was from The Exorcist. You know, you, <laughs> the the rage that people get. You're like, you camping son of a bitch. You know, it's like. But my thing about like, I'm glad they bring it back the remastered version because the reason why is because I'm not into this wall jumping jetpack flying stupid shit. Yeah, I like boots on the ground. I like, I'm like, okay, you might have some people jumping around and camping somewhere, but whatever. That's the way the game was played. It's right. too competitive now. It's like people like jumping around and like, oh, come on, you're like, you're not gonna have someone fall from the sky, you know, shooting down at me in my head. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's coming out. That's always the big headline of Call of Duty time. And Call then, of Duty. You guys are co- both Call of Duty. Gears fans, of War. Right? Gears of War came out already, right? Gears of War Four is out. Yeah, I want to. I want to check that out because I've I've seen some gameplay on that. It looks pretty nice. Uh, I do too. Well, yeah, we got a couple other early next gen. Uh, well, not really next gen, but modifications of these uh, more recent systems coming out too. We got yeah. 
the PlayStation 4 Plus coming out, which has uh, upgraded hardware, which allows it to operate at up to 4K if you have a 4K TV. And the same thing with the Xbox One S. But I know the Xbox One S is actually, they actually will stream 4K. It's not upscaling. Like the, um, that's the only thing they have on the PlayStation Pro. I mean, it's 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 already out. Yeah, it's already out. You can I'm get in it. the market for another next gen system. I got the PlayStation Four for the living room, but I need something for my room so that I can just watch Netflix in bed. Yeah, Netflix. Net. I can't even talk. <laughs> Netflix in bed is uh, one of my favorite things. Oh, you like the Netflix and chill? Well, yeah, <laughs> with with uh, the right the right girl. <laughs> You know, I don't. I don't just Netflix and chill with anyone. Oh, you're special. Yeah, but uh, no, no. Um, yeah, I'm in the market. I'm thinking if I'm going PlayStation downstairs, I should go Xbox One upstairs. I like your reasoning. And then I don't know. Maybe I could check out some different titles. And then they got let's see, Titanfall Two is supposed to be on all the systems, but you know, Titanfall Two is going to be better on the Xbox. It just is. Uh, how do you figure? Well, I mean, it was originally an Xbox game in the begin with, and okay, they're probably going to be more worried about hashing out the bugs for the, you know, it's kind of a. Well, I don't know if it's a first party game. Hmm. I don't know because it did so well on Xbox that I guess they're going to go ahead. And it's it's this first person shooter, and then after a certain amount of time, you can summon your mech, and then you get in it, and then you can I don't know, rain mech pain on people. It's fun. Mech pain and neck pain. Mech pain. That sounds rad. The one thing I'm looking forward to is the the NES Classic. It's gonna play. It's gonna come pre pre um booked with 30 games, three original. The original, right? Yeah, the original, original yeah. games. That is so cool. I don't know why the fuck they haven't thought of that for like the PlayStation, uh, not the PlayStation, the um. Well, the Wii. The no Super Nintendo. Oh, the Super Nintendo. And the, unless they put some Super Nintendo games on that little pl- uh, that little Nintendo box that they're coming out with. Yeah, I believe they. That's have. so neat. Nintendo's great, you know. They have all the Mario's, Donkey Kong's, even on there. They put out these little uh, these little mod things before. They ha- they had one for Sega Genesis for quite some mm-hmm. time. And yeah. Then now they're finally coming out with one for. It's only for sixty Nintendo. bucks. We're finally arriving That's at the great. Party. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna pick one up if it's only sixty, and it's 60 USB. bucks. It's USB plug in, dude. Yeah. That's great. Well Nintendo has announced that they're doing a new system now. I guess they're calling it the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, I, I saw that. It's uh I guess they're going back to cartridges, kinda like what they use right now for the Nintendo DS. Okay. And I guess with what it is, it's uh there's a system that you can either plug it to the T V and then you can play it that way, or there's, I guess there's also a way to like go ahead and then like when you can take your game on the go with you. Hmm. Oh so yeah. Like yeah, it also, yeah. So it also kind of turns into a handheld. Yeah, that's pretty. That's cool. that's way cool. The only the most exciting thing about this is that we they might actually get an honest to god Pokemon game on an actual television, as opposed to just handheld. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it would be called like Pokemon Stay or Go. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can take that on the go. Pokemon's cool. I'll, I'll admit it. I haven't. Uh, you know, I don't have a smartphone, so I don't play Pokemon Go. No, well, mine's but, uh, not good enough to play it. Really? Yeah. Well, no. the game itself is great because it's one of the most unique RPGs there is, and it's basically like all based on balancing a team of Pokemon so that, and having certain Pokemon that are good against other types because they're types. Yeah. You get. Know, I, that's okay, that, profiling. That's something that I think would suck me in if I gave it a shot when I ha- if I got a smartphone, which I'm gonna get soon, you know. But uh, it's Pokemon Go, you know. Like I, I, I had a few friends show me how to play, and it, it was fun. Well, so, well, you'll be happy to know that there's a spawn point in the house. Really? Oh Where, yes. Whereabouts? Uh, around the kitchen. What, did Nathan Burke find that? Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, <laughs> correspondent yeah. Nathan Burke found a Venonat in the house, I guess. Oh, well. And then he caught it, and then I guess there was a, a, a Spiro or something. He caught that, too. Wow. So I got a Pokemon infestation, and it's, it's kind of gross. <laughs> 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 Who are you going to call? Nathan Burke. 
Poke Busters. Poke yeah. Busters. Give it's Nate a call. He'll go ahead and clean them out for you. Now, you trap the creatures in the Pokeball, right? Yep. Yes. It's kind of like Ghostbusters, but it's with these weird creatures, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, except now they're indentured to you, and they, they're... They fight for you. And you make them fight for you. It's like dog fighting. But it's such a unique idea if you think about the storyline of Pokemon and everything with the an- oh, anime. Oh, I love it. I yeah. love the idea. It was it, it was a very uh, interesting and different anime that came out when we were kids. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know what happened first. Well, no, I think it was the game happened. In the, I think the, the game the happened anime. first, yeah. And then, yeah, I guess Ash Ketchum's got to be in his 20s by now. Yeah, I would say so. You'd think? Yeah. You think he's like living like the Big Lebowski somewhere? Yeah, <laughs> he's got like a five o'clock shadow, the and dude. he's like, "Oh man, he's like running a Pokemon gym, <laughs> drinking white Russians all day." Hell yeah, hell yes! <laughs> <laughs> like the guy from uh, um, the Adam Sandler movie. Hell yeah, yeah. Big Big Daddy. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> "Are you drunk, Mister Hurley?" Yeah, I, I had a few chardonnays. What of it? Get off the stand, please. <laughs> You're all right. <laughs> <laughs> you see the body's like, what? I'm not busy? Last week was a fluke. Bring it, woman. Bring it on, woman. <laughs> yeah. I love I love that movie, Big Daddy. That movie's great. I mean, we are getting we got a little off task, but that that movie's got a lot of funny parts. I'll just I'll just say it because I want it to be recorded on one of our podcasts of me doing this courtroom scene from Big Daddy. Oh, so we're taking yeah. a break from video games for a second because I just really want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna play the crazy guy who's on the stand. He's homeless, and he always wants his egg McMuffin, or sausage sausage McMuffin with hash browns. That's right. Mm-hmm. So he's like, my dad was a military man. I guess I wasn't such a good soldier. <laughs> One night, he tried to give me a crew cut while I was sleeping. Woke up, broke his arm. Haven't seen him since. I'd rather live on the street than under his freaky ass rules. <laughs> No more questions. <laughs> <laughs> and then he whips out the bag. He's like, he's like, he should be, he should be cleared of all the charges. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mister Kofax should be cleared of all charges. Can hey. I have my sausage McMuffin? <laughs> Steve Buscemi. Stevie Buscemi. Yeah, yeah. He, he plays a lot of really cool roles. <laughs> he plays in a lot of Adam Sandler movies. Crazy eyes. <laughs> I'll come down there and give you a crew cut. <laughs> Let's see your clippers. <laughs> How's it my problem? Your dad was sick. <laughs> Stop yelling at me. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I'll come down there and give you a crew cut. <laughs> hey, mister, I'll come down there and give you a crew cut. <laughs> <laughs> what, you know, what, not lemon tuna fish would be my first cut? Oh, yeah? The, Let's meatball. see your clippers. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, consider me living America, pal. I mean, if you don't like spaghetti and meatballs, you can just get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> you get the hell out. He doesn't say the F word. It's Italian dish, too. Uh, All right, back on task. That was fun, though. You did. Now we did check that off the old bucket list. Yeah, <laughs> I got that I got that recorded now. Uh, the Steve Buscemi uh, courtroom scene from Big Daddy. Thank you, thank you. It's fantastic. Um, so, gentlemen, we talked a little bit about some of the uh, explosive new releases that have come out this year, um, and we've talked about some of the up-and-coming consoles. Um, let's talk about video game genres for a minute. Why not? Mm-hmm. I mean, what would you say, and we'll go around the table, what would you say is your favorite genre of gaming, like sports, uh, RPG shooters, first-person shooters, uh, uh, fighting games, racing games. What, what, do you, what do you guys like the most? Wrestling? We'll go around the table and, and give me a few of your top picks. Well, let's see. Start with Holden, yeah. Um, I'm partial to adventure games. Um, I used to be real big into RPGs, but the RPG, as we used to know it, it's dead. Um... So, like, adventure stuff, uh, cu- kind of cut out of the Zelda cloth. Uh, I like sports games. Uh, and then there's been a lot of cool stuff coming out with first-person games uh, lately over the past kind of decade. The last decade's kind of been, like, the decade of the first-person shooter. Mm-hmm. Um, they're probably more first-person shooters than anything. Yeah, right now, or, yeah. Or just first-person games. You know, I think that the f- very first first-person person shooter that I played was Goldeneye for N64. That was an awesome game. That was like one of the 
first like really awesome first person shooters. I mean, you had things like Doom mm. and Wolfenstein, but you know before that, it never um, took advantage of the multiplayer asset because yeah. especially since the N sixty four was so revolutionary in having four controller ports where before there had only been right. two. Right, you could so, have four players. Like, that was so new to us back then. That was so cool. Yeah, if you had enough friends, you could get all get on a console. and you spend the whole goddamn night playing video games. Easy. Mm-hmm. Easily. And then whoever, whoever got the golden gun when you're always trying to find each other, it was like search, search and destroy. Right, almost. right. Yeah. You, anyone had that golden gun, you were, they were all done. You know? Yeah, the golden gun is like one shot, one kill. Mm-hmm. And the story was good too. The story was good as well. Well, it was a good movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was a good movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was but, 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 the the Pierce studio. Brosnan uh, uh, James Bond movies I thought were really great. I haven't been able to get into the new James Bond. I don't know why. Oh, David Craig. David Craig. Well, yeah. he's done making James yeah, Bond movies. Also... They're actively looking for somebody else. And they're actively looking for a female. Really? Yeah, they're changing up the gender. It's going to be like uh, Jane you? Bond, I think, wow. is what they're calling it. There's going to be a really horrible blowback from that. Yeah, yeah, just like the female Ghostbusters. I hate to say it. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, Whoa, I, but when I, you I fuck, when that. you mess up a franchise like that, it's and I'm not saying because they cast a female it got messed up. I'm saying the story was written a certain way mm-hmm. and you are portraying it differently, you know, with, well, with different characters than the way the story was I written. mean, if you're going to have the same exact sexist tropes that are in a regular James Bond film, like... Like I don't know, is there is there a nice term for a woman who who like just pretty much like uses men for sex? Uh, yeah, it's called a succubus. Yeah, that's a nicer term than slut, I think. Yeah, I like to, I like the term succubus. Uh, I I don't I don't like to slut shame anyone, you know. But they there's certainly succubuses out there. Well, yeah, Beware. Well, well, James Bond is like a huge one of the biggest rakes in fiction. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah! Oh, easily, yeah. easily. So, James Bond is just a womanizer that drinks a lot of martinis. Yeah, they Chicken, did. Not I, I, they did some research that, like, out of all the books he's been in, and they did a timeline. They said that he should have been dead like years ago, mm-hmm. according to like the, the yeah. frequency yeah. in which he drinks. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I wonder if they're gonna stick to the old James Bond formula with a uh, with a woman and just have her like like like. Just like just bang guys and then just th- like toss them away. I mean, yeah, there's a certain amount of like dudes out there that would totally get used by a woman. So it's not like unbelievable. Oh, it's not unbelievable at all. People do it all the time, and, and then especially with the kung fu stuff. And then us, I, I was still trying to like waiting for people to get over the idea that Idris Elba would be a good a good casting for Bond. Yeah. That, once again, like, you know, if a story was written as a white Englishman, keep it as a white English, you know, I'm not, I'm not being racist. It's just the way the story was written. If the story was written as, as, you know, he's a black Englishman for James Bond, then it would make perfect sense because Idris Elba is an amazing actor. But I think he could totally pull it off. I think, uh, I think the biggest thing with that is... Is uh, they have to if they're gonna do something like that they have to change what it is to be 007. It has to be about the code name. Yeah, and maybe yeah. maybe something like James Bond is just the name that they always have attached to that number. Ah, uh, but I don't know if they're gonna do some legacy stuff like but that. But she's James, that would be she's, cool she's, she's and make everyone Bond. accept it better. But yeah, or, the, or this just call them this probably just be called 007. Well, they could. I mean, if they did it like that, it was just about like that code name. Whoever has that code name working at MI6 at that moment. Mm-hmm. I mean, kind of like uh, Doctor Who. The Doctor, right, right. The Doctor regenerates and becomes a different actor every couple years. Right, right. If they they could do something similar with the same kind of logic with with uh, with James Bond. Right, right. We'll see. I don't know. I I just kind of they say they're actively looking for a woman, but like I still have it in my head that they're gonna go ahead and call up Cumberbatch or or, <laughs> or Huddleston. Cause oh, I, oh he, Tom oh, Hilston, he'd be amazing. Well, Benedict Cumberbatch is already Doctor Strange. Uh, dude, 
Yeah, yeah like, but I they mean, can find the time to fill. I mean, all you look elements. at Robert Downey Jr. He was Sherlock Holmes and Iron uh, Man. Oh, yeah. Different, different uh, contracts. Uh, different, different yeah. properties. Different properties. Exactly. Yeah, I yeah. mean, the Marvel contracts are constricting, but like. If that's something he they really wanted to do, well, Tom Hiddleston's definitely trying to get away from that kind of stuff. So like, oh, he big time, yeah. And uh, like, he's J- typecast right now as Loki. Yeah. So well, no, he's been in all sorts of great stuff. But like, yeah, maybe that's the role he needs. Because I mean, he's gonna call him Loki, it, and it would make sense to go ahead and hire him for that. And he's not the classic like burly James Bond, but I think it'd be a lot easier to, for people to accept than than some of the uh, the ideas that they've been playing around with. Oh yeah, easily. Like, I mean, as long as it's done well and they make it make sense. Like Hollywood stuck in like this this hole where they're they're trying to remake everything that was once an original thing. Right, right. Yeah, they've been doing so many remakes over the past decade. They've done so many remakes. Like all sorts of reboots. Stuff. And then now they're even rebooting stuff from like the eighties. Yeah, I mean, some of it's fun if it's done right. It's fun if it's. You know, there's a lot of things like, you know, I hate to bring this up again, but the, the, the latest Ghostbusters movie, like, you know, that was a franchise that got turned upside down. Um, it didn't have a great response in the theaters, but I feel like that particular film is going to explode with DVD sales. Well, I, I've, I've watched think? what I mm-hmm. think what I like what they did with the Ghostbusters. At least they, they um they gave proper homage to Howard Ramis. If you noticed did you that. did you see the movie? Yeah, I watched. Oh, it. Oh, okay. You've I liked you, it. You, you they, liked it. It was funny. It, they uh, you still see the same original characters. They still yeah. on the basis of thing. You have um Chris Hemworth, who everybody knows his story. He plays like. The, the, um, the, the, the secretary the, the or receptionist, whatever. yeah, yeah receptionist, and he's, and he's a total dumb shit. That's funny. Yeah, it's, now, like, are the female Ghostbusters? Are they like the daughters of the original Ghostbusters? No, they have. They're just in the same boat. They 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 love their science and. Well, they're in and, a similar situation yeah, where yeah, they're just, studying the paranormal yeah. stuff, like the original Ghostbusters were, and yeah. then yeah. So you saw it too, Holden? No, I've not seen it. Oh, you just know about it. I know yeah. about it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people talk about it on Twitter. But it's funny. Yeah, Melissa McCarthy. You have. Um, um, I think it's going to get its sequel once the DVD oh, sells. Yeah. Because this is one of those things where it's like really empowering to women, and maybe not everybody you wanted to go see it got a chance to go see it. It is entertaining though, because you do you still see Dan Aykroyd, you still see um, Bill Murray, really, uh, okay. even even though I'm Washington, because um, huh. he's like, he, well, I'm not gonna say it's too much, but it's funny. But it's like um, they do a lot of references from the original. They're not trying to steal it, it's like remake it. It's just like another generation of Ghostbusters. Ah, uh, I but see. But it keeps it. It keeps it. So what does it? I thought it didn't tie into the other one. I thought this was its own thing. No, it really didn't. It just like it didn't. You don't see them as their actual characters. Like you see, you see Dan Aykroyd driving a cab, and he's like, "I ain't afraid of no ghost." You know? <laughs> <laughs> they just get cameos, basically. Yeah, they have cameos, and they they have um, a bust of Howard Ramis. You know, when he was I wonder. Egon. I wonder how much money Aykroyd and, and Bill Murray got for making appearances in that. Because like Bill Murray said, he wasn't going new whatsoever under no circumstances. Well, he must have changed his mind after when they finally it, went ahead and made it anyway yeah. because he wanted to see he, he figured like him not being in it would just kill the project and it didn't. He came in as uh, <laughs> his came in was like proving that they were frauds. Really? Yeah, so it's like uh oh. it's like you know when in the first one with the EPA was coming Yeah, the EPA down, guy, yeah, the environmental like guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, the the Ferris Bueller freaking principal real genius. <laughs> with uh, Val Kilmer, that was the um, professor. If you ever seen that movie, he was not. in that one too. Man, he played a lot of villainous, comedic villainous roles in the eighties. Oh, and he was also in Biodome. So between that, <laughs> Ferris Bueller, and the thing, the other thing you mentioned, man. The Word. Eight, he's in all sorts of eighties comedic villain roles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um. Vinny, uh, we never got to you uh, in regards to your favorite genre of gaming. Uh, I, I like a myriad of genres, but my the ones I've always played all the time were like the sports, um, professional wrestling games. Right. And if you remember Nintendo, they had pro wrestling. Oh, I love that game. And I you, own it. I own it. Be, you can be Starman, and after a while, you have enough wins, you can go against Black Cat. Yeah. Uh, um, that, game, that game was awesome, and I was always Starman. Yeah, but I like the shooter games. Um I didn't play too much of the shooter games before, but I got into it like in 2007, and that's when Modern Warfare first came out. 
Yeah, and you're a big Call of Duty guy. Yeah, I, I like the old style Call of Duty. I like, I like the times when you can go on there and just talk trash. I like, I, I like games you can have fun yeah. interacting with people and like getting mad. They, they get old. <laughs> they rage quit. All that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, that's fun. I was never into like uh, I like like all like especially like the Assassin's Creed games. I like those. Right, right. Those are popular. The fighting, the fighting, the shooting, the um, like Mortal Kombat. Oh, I love um, Mortal Kombat. Yep. Like I, classic. I like, I like I like old I like old like platform games too. Like like Golden Axe and uh, Altered Beast. Oh, uh, I have beaten Golden Axe mm. quite a few times and Altered Beast as well. Altered Beast is a great vintage video game for yeah, Sega. Yeah, I heard it was a fairly complex fighting game for its time. I think it, it is because like you have to like fight like all kinds of th- different things like creatures and skeletons and whatever. And then, like, at first, you're, like, this little, like, guy in his underwear. And then, like, you turn into, like, a really jacked guy when you get the first orb. Um, and you start changing. And, 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 and he's still in his underwear. But then, if you get two orbs, then you turn into the beast. And in, in level one, you, your, your beast is uh, a, a werewolf. You know, altered beast. And then in the second level, you're a dragon if you get the two orbs. You always start out in your underwear, though. It's just a thing. I don't know. Yeah, just a mortal man. Yeah, and he's uh, he just doesn't want to wear pants, I guess, which is fine. He's he's gonna turn into a werewolf anyway. The guy doesn't have a pot to piss in. Yeah, <laughs> but he's gonna save the day. He's gonna save the princess because she's captured. Because that's how every video game from the vintage era uh, was was that was the plot for pretty much everything. You'd have to save a princess. What do you do in Mario? You got to save the princess. Mm-hmm. What do you do in Golden Axe? You gotta save a princess, I think. What was Sonic the Hedgehog trying to do? Just go really fast and. He was flip, like, "Oh man, hey, Doctor Eggman's I think, a dick." I think he was on meth. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I don't know. He does some pretty crazy stuff, though. I didn't play too much Hot Sonic because the only games I played in Genesis were like Mortal Kombat. Oh, uh, dude, I rock. I still rock Sonic. Sonic 1 and Sonic 2 on my Game Gear all the time. Like, I love Sonic. It's just, it's a, I love the fast pace, and the Game Gear is, like, big and clunky, but I just, it brings me back to my childhood. I love playing it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those platformers that, like, has a great flow to it. Yeah. For the most part. Um, like, if you kind of know what you're doing in every level, you can kind of just seamlessly just, like, never stop. Yeah, it's way cool, and, way cool. And I rock the baseball games. I'll, Sports, know, yeah, baseball games like are fun. Like MLB The Show, I'll rock that. You know, I play it online a few times, but I usually play the computer, and I'm usually beating them like 75 to 2. Right. You know, <laughs> but I, or they're like the, um, the Madden games, I like the, I like the fun and most of Madden games, but the first football game I actually really ever played was Tecmo Bowl. And um, then you had Tecmo yeah, if you had if you ever played Tecmo Bowl on the old Nintendo console... Tickle Ball? Tecmo. Tem- Tecmo Bowl. Tecmo Bowl. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I guess, I yeah, Bo, game, yeah, Bo Jackson was, yeah. like, invincible in that game. Him and Barry Sanders, you cannot catch him. You have that, you have that, <laughs> dan, 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 you just run zigzag all day, like, come yeah. on, man, let me tackle you. Nope. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, That's way cool. Every time they touch the ball, they pretty much score. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know, I do remember it. It just took me a second. Total jock. And then yeah. Super Contra. Was oh, the one I played. yeah. I just played that not too long ago. That's a fun game. Do you know the code? No. So you get the super sprayer and unlimited lives? No, I don't know the codes. Up, I, up, I just like up, down, up, down, A, B, A, B, select, start. Up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, select, start, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They even have a shirt at game. Uh, some, I think it's FYE. It actually shows you the code. Well, then there's the blood code for Mortal Kombat. Yeah. It, used to be. it was like A, B, B, A, B, B. Oh, yeah. I used to know the codes for Mortal Kombat, yeah. Uh, the fatalities and... Uh, it was That was probably why everyone loved the game, because it had all these secret moves. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. they were secret moves. And they, they were, were awesome. You. Like, oh, cool. finish him. Yeah, you're just <laughs> ripping someone's head out with, along with their spine. Hmm. Yeah, Mortal, Mortal Kombat, I remember there was a lot of controversy when that came out, because it was among the most violent... Uh, and gory video games that had ever come out at that point in time. Ugh, Lieberman and Tipper Gore. Yeah. <laughs> Have you guys played the uh, Mortal Kombat XL? 
I have not. No, I'm waiting for Injustice 2. Yeah, because the next time I buy a fighting game, that's going to be the one. That's going to be the one. Injustice is fun. I have to get that game. I have the first one. Yeah, I got the first one. Um, I love it. I play it. Well, I don't play it much anymore, but I used to play that game constantly. Uh, I got pretty good with most of like the Justice League characters. Batman, of course. Aquaman with the trident. He, he fucks people up. Yeah, he's got great reach. and then Great reach. Aquaman's kind of a cheap character, but he's, but all, not he's as awesome. Cheap, not as cheap as Green Arrow, though. Green Arrow's wicked cheap. He's got the leg sweep, and then on top of that, you yeah. can just spam like shooting arrows at people. And yeah. It's like the easiest ranged attack. Yeah, you it's so easy. yeah, it's so cheap. I use, so I use, cheap. I use Scorpion. Well, yeah, you get the DLC. You, well, I get of it course over. you'd get the Scorpion. Well, of course he, yeah. yeah. Get over here! <laughs> Boom. No, I keep on doing the um, you know, the the phantom hit through the fire. Yeah, <clears throat> they did the, They get the. I don't know. They had so many great uh, DLC characters for that game too. Apparently, they're gonna have most of the DC fringe library. Yes. Uh, wow. Uh, so they, so they're gonna look weird because you know the injustice costumes are extra weird and blocky. Mm. Well, not blocky, but they're more ornament. Yeah, and I know what you're talking about because. Uh, from what I could see in the Justice League movie trailer, they modeled the Flash and Cyborg's costumes, at least, uh, off of that video game. Uh, definitely the Flash. I imagine Jim Lee has a fair amount to do with that. He has a lot to do with the multimedia stuff going out, along with Jeff Johns. Yeah, he does, yeah. And yeah. I would not be surprised if somehow Jim Lee is directly responsible for the for that in particular I mean, it looks cool enough, like, but it's definitely a different Flash from what you see in the pages of the Flash book. Yeah. You well, know? I don't know. When it comes to video games, I'm more of a fan of cell shading. Like, if they put out a cartoony, cell shaded DC fighting game, I'd, I'd be smitten. Now, what do you mean by, uh, by that? So, you know how when... Um, you remember how the, the visual style of Zelda Wind Waker? Yes, yes, I do. The, that's called cell shading. Okay, and it's the, it's very pretty, and I, I just don't see why they couldn't. I'd like a version of the, um, like, like an here's, injustice. He, type if game. they were gonna put out a fighting game, here's how I would want them to do it, because right now they have a game out called the uh, for Naruto called Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm, and it's <laughs> you you kind of fight in a 3D environment, you know. But what they need to, what I want DC to do is have a game made that's of the same style that looks cell shaded, hmm. and then have that be the fighting game because it's it'd make more sense for these people to be fighting in a 3D environment where you can like punch people through buildings and pick up cars and smash people and oh yeah and they can incorporate abilities and everything oh just have interactive parts of the map. Pretty much. Yeah, well, partially, yeah. or just like have tons of interactive parts yeah. of the map. It's like th- that's what that's what that'd that, be rad. Uh, if if it misses, injustice was good for that. Another game that's like that is this uh, Jump Stars game. It has like all these shonen jump characters in a fighting game. Yeah, I stopped playing that because they wouldn't let me unlock any more characters. I was kind of bullshit. <laughs> I hear you, bud. I, I hear mean, you. They wanted me to unlock everything. I don't have time for that. I just want to. Mm-hmm. Try everybody yeah, out, you know. Yeah, let's play play a few quick rounds. Yeah, yeah. and I don't know where it categorizes. Like, you guys remember the Force Awakens games? The Star Wars Force Awakens. You were. I've played it. I remember the first Star one. Killer. I got stuck in the first one. Play, I've was, I've played it over a buddy's house before. It's really cool. I played the yeah. second one too. Only I guess the disc was scratched, and yeah, yeah. That I was an awesome game. Part. Do they? Oh yeah. Are they going to be bringing that to the PS4? Eventually, well, I mean, they're what they're doing is they're re- like retroactively bringing back like all the games that have already been made because they just know people will buy them. Because I get, I have that subscription to that, you know, PlayStation Now, the live gaming stream, and the one thing I I like about it, some some of it they do have all, of course they have all like they have um. So how does that work? They just like you, they let you download a game and play it for thirty days. No, you just you just stream it. You just and stream it. it? You just stream it. It's like an, it's like a P, the old PS3, PS2 games that are still in that format. Oh, so it's games that really don't have heavy load times for the particular system. Yeah, and if you're idle for a while, it'll just kick you off because you're like playing live on a service. Like, yeah, yeah, because like you're on, on a demand. server and you're taking up bandwidth. And, you you know. can do the infamouses. They have the infamouses on there. You know, um, you know what the. With, uh, I played the second that. one. It was all right. 
And, um, you know, they have all the Uncharted's. They have some RPG and you know, Final Fantasy games and stuff like that. I guess, uh, yeah, they finally came out with another Final Fantasy game after, like, three years. I haven't oh, you're a big Final Fantasy guy. Hold well, on. I used to be. Uh, like, uh, Final Fantasy X was the last Final Fantasy game I played with any seriousness. Hmm. I love that game. Everything about it had the best battle system. The level up system was on point. I never played Final Fantasy X 2 because, I don't know, I just never did. Never got around to it. Um, but they, they, they remastered them. They're re-released right now. Oh, wow. I just don't have the patience for RPGs and like, <laughs> oh, go talk to the old man by the well. The yeah, old yeah. Like, <laughs> ah, they say there's a vampire in the cave outside of town, <laughs> but that's just a rumor. I sure wish my crops would grow. I wonder what's killing them. <laughs> hmm. And here, give me 500 coins so you can go on this mission. So you got to go, you got you to go, and you go in, and you get your ass handed to you, and you finally get to the vampire, and you find a way to kill the vampire, and you get back, and, and you go, and you heal up, and they're like, wow, everything's still dead. I heard another rumor that there's a lich even further believe the vampire. <laughs> so then you got to go fight the lich. It's, ugh. <laughs> and this is like, a, this is most RPGs. Yeah. And it used to be turn-based, so you could just kind of pick an ability and use it, but now it's like like live action stuff. And so you got to do everything on the fly. Yeah. It's just not my style of RPG. Did you play the Dishonored games at all? Uh, I bought one, and then like I, I just couldn't get into it. Yeah, Dishonored 2 comes out. That's going to be a pretty fairly big deal. That one won a fair amount of rewards, I do believe. Mm-hmm. But it's like the best time of the year to be a gamer, though, because all the big games you wait for, they usually what I don't like about sometimes is like they hype a game so much, and then you play it, and you're like, this game sucks. Well, that's what they spend so much time developing these things that pe- once people like spend all this money on these games, they don't want to admit that the game sucks. Yeah, and people are gonna yeah. be su- people are gonna be surprised. I guarantee you, day um, day one launch, November fifth. And like, then they try to get the- people to be part of these one game lifestyles with all the mm. DLC. If you people are really into a game, like there's, they probably end up spending close to two hundred bucks on the game when oh, it's yeah. all said and done. You know, I'll 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 be one of them. That I I at least spend one hundred twenty dollars on each game, every Call of Duty. I'll wow! Buy the, I'll buy the season pass. I'll have to make sure I have all the DLCs, and I never play it because I <laughs> love. Oh, you gotta you no, gotta get I, back into I, that for well, Scorpio Marine. Well, I'm gonna do that when when Mono, Modern Warfare Remastered is multiplayer. I'll be oh, doing okay. that all day because I know I'm not going to get flustered by somebody flying over my head and I was like, okay, here you go. You're going to fly over your head. It's like so fast-paced. I'm like, combat's not like that. You know, make it yeah. simple. Even though you can run and gun in that game, but now I, I remember the maps. I know how it was. It was ground and pound base. It was more objective too. You're not running around like a like an idiot with your head chopped off. Nah, it is a Team Deathmatch. That's always how it is. Yeah, Team Deathmatch is good. And it's like... uh. But it's like I'm just glad it's having the, some nostalgia back, you know. It's like uh, it's been what since 2007 that game that game came out, and it's almost like what almost almost a 10 year anniversary. Yeah. And look how far they've come. But it's like I don't like I I think I'm gonna be on that game regular than Infinite Warfare. I'm not even interested in playing it. I didn't even play the Infinite game. Warfare. I bet, no, I'm betting that it's got a great single player mode. Well, I'm I'm playing a campaign. I'm pretty sure it's a good campaign because um, Raven and um. In, uh, Infinity Ward always have great storylines. Yeah, I haven't played a Call of Duty game since that one that uh, Kevin Spacey did the... Uh, oh, um, that was uh, Black, Black Ops, Ops 2. 2. Black yeah. Ops 2. I didn't get Black Ops 3 because... I don't though, know. Call of Duty really is a one-trick pony after a while. Even though Black Ops 2 was, was a good multiplayer game, it's probably one of the best ones they've had so far. Mm, yeah, well, yeah, they get all the options and stuff. But That's only when I made it to Master Prestige. Oh, that all exo armor and stuff. And, uh. Yeah, that was advanced warfare. That was crazy. Jumping around in, like, jumpsuits. And your freaking exo armor. <laughs> well, uh, this has just been an amazingly illuminating podcast today. Illuminati. <laughs> um... Well, we covered a lot of ground in regards to gaming. We talked about uh, some of the up-and-coming consoles. We talked about some of the new releases in regards to games. We talked about our favorite gaming genres and all kinds of gaming titles. If you want to listen, just, you know, rewind this podcast to the beginning. 
you start over and you can hear about all this stuff that we just talked about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who knows how you ended up in a situation where you only heard the end of this, but you should, <laughs> <laughs> you should, you should still see what the beginning's like. <laughs> yeah, the beginning kicked ass because we had kick-ass music and uh, you should listen to it again. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you want to be listening to our podcast if you want to keep up on the comings and goings of all uh, geek and pop culture news. And our inside jokes. Yeah, we throw a few inside jokes in there too. break the fourth wall just a little. However, uh, we have a lot of fun and uh, it's just important not to grow up too fast. You don't want to grow up too fast. Age is just a number. Anyways, um, I want to thank you guys for being on the show, of course. Uh, you know, My name is Andrew Puzak of Vigilant Geek Media, and with me, as always, my comic book partner in crime. Oh, hold an arm, Vigilant Geek Media, look at me. And we want to thank Vigilant Geek Media analyst Vin Scorpion for his contributions on the show today as well. Hey, it's always a pleasure to be here, man. And as always, visit our blog at thevigilantgeek.blogspot.com. And also, and you know, since we're having a we're having a gaming thing, though, also I'm going to be starting that um, Twitch. What are you really going to do it though? Yeah, I'm, but as soon as like all these new releases coming out, I have everything set up where I can stream it. And I'm Did you get your Elgato caption yeah, card, I, dude? I, I, do my, I do have my Elgato HD six. Yeah, Elgato. Also. Is it an HD capture? Is it is it the HD it is, Pro, it is dude. dude. Yeah, it is their partner. All right. Um. All right. Well, when you get that squared away, we will plug it for you. Well, it's it's this. I'm just waiting for the launch. To, All to right. go live. Okay, go so, live. Yeah. Um, you so gotta, yeah, live one. We got a live. I, one. I don't. I don't know much about Twitch. Real quick before we end this, what is Twitch and 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 how can it be used to benefit us? Oh, okay. Yeah. So Twitch is a live streaming website. So what you do is you, they give you well by through using OBS, which is a program, and then along with Twitch. Uh, you go ahead, Twitch goes ahead and give you a broadcast key, you go ahead, you type that into OBS, and then you need a camera, and then along with that, you can live broadcast your uh, footage of yourself, or gameplay from whatever game you're playing. Like Scorpio Marine. Yeah, and then yeah. people can go online and then watch and, yeah. said stream. And you, oh, you, cool. have, you have like live interaction with the people that are watching you. Oh, that's neat. So that's it's like neat. Yeah, it's like people like that in live at one interaction. Most of the time, it's like I'll be doing gameplays, but you won't be seeing me. You'll be hearing me, but you just won't be seeing me. Right. That's You're just, seeing the gameplay. Yeah. It's like when uh, when we got live broadcast when we did Stop and Swap. Just, well, yeah, we went over to Stop and Swap with Brad Orm. Yeah. And uh, then, yeah, that was that was a good time. So this is something we could do in the future. Of, yeah, you know, you, do a live broadcast. It can be done with YouTube. It can be done with Twitch. Uh, I don't know if there are any other live broadcasts. Um, those are the two. Steam, those are two huge ones. Steam yeah. is calling one, but I don't really go on that one. I know a lot of people have. I bet it's a huge Steam. deal, though. Yeah, tons of people use. Well, they Steam. have. They have um, people use. Um, um, and Twitch is actually with Amazon now, so and then, like they kind of like partner up, have like a deal. If you have like merchandise, the Amazon will help you produce it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Give it to other, give it to your fans, or whatever. That's cool. But you can even do podcasts on there. You can do whatever. It's a, it's a live, it's, a, it's just live right then and there. Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, you know, some food for thought in regards to our little operation. Uh, very cool. So, um, once again, I'm Andrew Puzak of Visual Link Geek Media. With me, as always, a comic book partner in crime. Hold the jack up, oh, Visual Link Geek Media. And also Visual Link Geek Media analyst Vin Scorpion. Hell yeah. Representing the Scorpion sh- we want to we want to encourage you all to play lots of video games, enjoy life, and as always, stay, stay vigilant. vigilant.